Hello everyone. Myself, Dr. Risha Mehra from ABS Engineering College. I'm going to talk about laser fundamentals. It will be divided into two parts. Part one, I'm going to explain in this presentation. So coming to the outline part, I'm going to talk about what is laser, what is the full form of laser, then difference between laser light and normal light source, types of radiations which are going to be involved in laser, difference between spontaneous and stimulated emission, then the Einstein coefficients. So laser stands for light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Why the light is amplified and what is the stimulated emission? These are few terms which are going to learn in the next few slides. Yes, the properties of laser which are extremely important. It's highly intense. The light beam of laser, it is focused at a particular direction. All the, fo all the photons are concentrated in a particular direction. There is no deviation. That's why the light is highly intense. When we talk about collimated, we can say that all the light rays, all the photons, they are following the parallel manner. They are running in the parallel manner. That's why it's said to be collimated. It's highly directional. Yes, because there is no deviation of the laser light in any other direction. It's focused at a particular direction. Monochromatic. Regarding the laser light source, it is having a particular wavelength. Yes, in now, nowadays, today's scenario, there are tunable lasers available. But, but at the time, we can tune them again to a single wavelength. That's why it's monochromatic. Coherence is again a very important property of light source. And we can understand it in such a way that as some of the group of students, they are doing a march pass. So if they are doing a march pass, we can easily see that their movements are exactly in the same phase. Similarly, in coherence, all the light beams, all the photons, they're having the same phase, same wavelength, same frequency. That's why they're highly coherent. There's a difference between normal light source and laser light source. The first point, stimulated and spontaneous emission. This is going, to, I'm going to explain in the coming slide. Then yes, the laser light source is highly monochromatic while the normal light source, we can say, if we talk about white light, it is having several colors. So it cannot be monochromatic. It's uh, highly intense. The laser light is highly intense because the photons are concentrated at a particular direction. And it is not the case with the normal light source. Yes, the laser light source, it will be highly coherent. All the photons, they are running with the same phase and same frequency, while the normal light source, all the photons, all the light rays, they are running here and there. They are just random. We can have a look over here also. If we talk about incoherent light source, Please have a look at the diagram. All the light rays, or we can say the group of photons, they are running here and there. They are just doing the random motion. They are not concentrated at a particular direction. So this is what the incoherent light is. The photons here are not, they will not be in the same phase. They will not be parallel to each other in case of incoherent light source. We can see that in coherent light source, all the photons, all the light rays, they are having a constant phase difference among themselves. They are same in frequency, amplitude and continuity. So this will be a coherent light. There is a very important factor on which laser principle works and that is the radiation part. The light sources works on the basis of few radiations. One of them is absorption and others are emission. So what is this absorption and what is this emission? See, if we are giving some energy, this means somehow we have taken that energy, right? So if we talk about various atomic interactions, 
various kind of radiations which are involved in laser. We can explain it with single two level system. We can see the diagram. We are having E1 as the lower level, lower energy level, and E2 is the higher energy level. By default, due to stability, the atom always resides in the ground state that we can see in the figure. Now, if we want to push this atom in the higher excited state, then we have to apply the energy in such a way that the frequency or the energy which we are applying, basically the energy which we are applying, it should be equal to the difference between these two energy levels, E2 minus E1. So we can look at the second diagram. We have applied a photon, the incident, the photon is going to be incident among this laser, among this uh, system, E1 and E2. And when this light photon, which is having the energy H nu, and if it's H nu is equals to E2 minus E1, that is the difference between the two energy levels, this atom will be jumped up to the higher energy level, that is E2. This means now the atom is absorbed and this process is called absorption. Now, atom is already there in the excited state. There will be two types of emission. If this atom will again jump to the ground state, it will lead to two types of emission. One of the emission, it is spontaneous emission. Spontaneous means random. In case of spontaneous emission, what is going to happen? The atom who is there in the excited state, it will not going to it, uh, wait here for a longer period of time. The lifetime of such states is very small and it will suddenly jump down. When it will suddenly jump down, we can have the look at the second diagram. It is going to emit the radiation which it has absorbed, that is H nu. So this is spontaneous emission. There is other kind of emission which is extremely important in laser. That's why in the full form of laser, the S stands for stimulated emission, not spontaneous emission. So in st stimulated emission, what is going to happen? Please look at the diagram. The atom is there in the excited state E2 level. An external photon of energy H nu is going to incident on this atom which is sitting at the higher level and it is going to push that atom to the ground state due to which now when the atom it is going to drop in the ground state please look at the second diagram it is going to emit two photons why two photons one is the photon one is the energy which initially the atom has taken up to jump up to go up in the higher excited level and the other one is the energy of that incident photon, which is applied when the atom is already there in the higher excited state. So this is stimulated emission. In such cases, these photons, they will, highly, they will be highly coherent. They're going to maintain the constant phase difference among themselves. So these are few differences, major differences between stimulated and spontaneous emission. An atom in the excited state is induced to return to ground state in case of stimulated emission. While in case of spontaneous, the atom suddenly drops down to ground state, resulting in the random movement of the photons. Then in case of stimulated emission, second point, the emitted photons move in the same direction, while in case of spontaneous, the photons, they are going to move in a random manner. Obviously, in stimulated emission, when the photons, they are going in a particular direction, the beam will be highly intense, while in case of spontaneous, the beam will be less intense and it will be diverging as well. Stimulated emission, the beams, the photons, they will be moving in a coherent manner means they will be having the same, the constant phase difference that is explained in point four, while in spontaneous, there will be no phase relation between the emitted photons. The last point is the rate of emission in case of stimulated part is some particular value. And this value is different from the 
rate of emission in spontaneous case. This I am going to explain in the Einstein coefficients part. So these are the Einstein coefficient and their relationship. So this is a long derivation. We can have the look at the derivation. Here we are going to find out the probability of absorption as well as emission. So we can consider that there are two energy levels, E1 and E2. And N1 and N2, N1 is basically the number of atoms in the ground state. N2 will be number of atoms in the higher excited state. So what will be the rate of stimulated absorption over here? When the atom is getting absorbed, we are applying an incident photon H nu such that its energy should be equals to E2 minus E1. So in this case, the rate of stimulated absorption, it is going to be proportional to two factors. One is the energy density of incident photon, which we call as by U nu. And the other factor, it depends upon the number of atoms in the ground state. Whatever matter is involved, whatever terms are involved in the energy level even, that we are going to consider for the rate of stimulated absorption. So if we remove this proportionality symbol, there will be a constant and we are going to call that constant B12, which is Einstein coefficient of absorption. N1 is the number of atoms in the ground state and equation 1, if we look at U nu is the energy density of incoming photon, which is coming to level E1 so that the atom can be raised from ground state to higher excited state. Now, to find probability system for spontaneous emission. So for spontaneous emission, Please have a look at the diagram and the upper level of the diagram. In spontaneous, there is no incident photon here in the E2 level. So here, the transition probability for spontaneous emission is proportional to only N2. Nothing else. So if we remove the proportionality symbol, it will be P21 spontaneous equals to A21 into N2 where A21 is the Einstein coefficient for spontaneous emission. It is going to tell the rate of probability, a rate of uh, spontaneous emission. Now for the third part, which is transition probability for stimulated emission. In this case, the rate of stimulated emission, again, we have to look at the upper part, upper level, because it is a case of emission. We can see in case of uh, stimulated emission, there is also an incident photon was targeted at the upper level. This means that the probability for stimulated emission from level 2 to level 1, which we call as P21 stimulated, is equals to B21 into N2 into U nu, where N2 is the number of atoms in the higher level because the atom is jumping from this level to ground state and U nu is the energy density of incident photon. Now this photon is incident on the upper level E2. B21 is the constant which we call as Einstein coefficient of stimulated emission of radiation. If we are going to add these two terms, basically in thermal equilibrium part, the rate of absorption is equals to the rate of emission. So that's why in the upper equation, we have written P12, the probability of absorption from one level to two level is equals to P21 spontaneous plus P21 stimulated. If we are going to add these equation, use this equation, we are going to get the energy density through the calculation part, which is equation number five, and it is A21 by B21 upon B12 upon B21 in bracket N1 upon N2 minus 1. Now this N1 upon N2, according to Boltzmann distribution law, the ratio of number of atoms in the ground state to the number of atoms in the excited state is equal to E raised to the power H nu by KT. 
where T is an absolute temperature. So if we are going to use this equation number six in the previous equation, we are going to replace N1 by N2. We are going to get equation seven, which is the energy density of incident photon in terms of mu, in terms of the Boltzmann constant K and T. This is the energy density, which we have calculated through probability distribution. There is a standard energy density formula, which we call as Planck's radiation formula through equation number eight. So if we are going to relate the previous equation energy density with this one, the standard formula, we are going to get a result which states that B12 equals to B21. Means Einstein coefficient for absorption is equal to Einstein coefficient for stimulated emission. So we are going to get one more result that A21 upon B21, the ratio of the Einstein coefficient for spontaneous emission to the Einstein coefficient for stimulated emission is 8 by H nu cube upon C cube. Means this will be proportional to nu q, which states that higher the frequency means smaller is the value of V21. So this is my part one of this laser system. And the next part I'm going to explain in the next few slides. The, the references which I have used are these one. So thank you for today.